better than it is. But the reality is I was a shit student and my teachers were like, you gotta speak in English. And I was like, ah, no, discúlpame, yo no voy a hablar en inglés porque es que no me puedes decir que hablen lo que en el idioma en el que no quiero hablar y a mí no me importa y no sé qué, no sé qué. I was so pica, I was terrible. So, and I spoke like that, yeah. I was like super valley girl in Spanish. Uh, and I had like an attitude growing up. And I was like, teachers are not gonna tell me how to live my life. And then I, I learned the lesson, you know, that life's a lot tougher than I thought it was in my little bubble. But anyway, I, I just, you know, there's some things that are harder for me to say and some words that are hard for me to pronounce. And sometimes I say something and it sounds like something else. And then people are like, oh my God, TOS, she's saying something wrong. And I'm like, yo, you should try to speak for eight hours a day, every fucking day in a language that's not your first language. And then after you do that for seven years, then you can come and you can criticize my speech. Okay. But seriously, it's just kind of crazy. Pucha madre carajo miércoles. Miércoles en la tarde, así me dice mi mamita. How long have you been living in Saskatoon, Lenny? Well, <clears throat> I've been living in Saskatoon for a few years now, but the problem is like, I don't really go out or like talk to other people, you know? Like, I just speak to myself all day in front of a computer for hours. And so like, it reinforces my, my bad speaking patterns, you know? Because, like, when I was going to university, I would, like, talk to professors and they had, like, good English, you know. But my only, like, English interaction is with Twitch chat. And so, I speak really poor English. And I don't in only speak, like, really ghetto now. Because, like, my, I speak super ghetto now. But not only I speak super ghetto, but I, I also, like, I, you know, no, it's just bad. It's just terrible. So, I'm Colombian. It's so sorry, Colombiana. The beginning of insanity. I'm blaming chat. LOL. No, I'm not blaming you guys individually. I'm I'm blaming the whole internet culture. <clears throat> the inter yeah, people like don't speak properly. And so I'm starting to speak like that because it's like a very lazy way of speaking. And I've caught I've caught myself saying stuff that I'm just like, that's not proper English. But like I don't care anymore. <clears throat> And shortened stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like short, super shortened things. Like you guys, I don't really type U very often. I just type a U and instead of typing R, I just type an R. And like it saves me a lot of time, believe it or not. The word lazy was dropped. <clears throat> I'm lazy. So what? I think we all are lazy. Okay, some people more. You speak better than Sofia Vergara. Yes, you guys. You have to be appreciative of the fact that I could sound even worse. Have you guys ever heard Sofia Vergara? Okay, she's beautiful. And in Modern Family, she like... <clears throat> I think she exaggerate, exaggerates her accent though. But she just screams all the time. And she's just like... Oh, it's just screaming constantly. Like, at least I don't scream that much. I could scream that much. Shame of us. Ride better. Oh, I will try. Repeat my name, please. Luigi Susa Soto. Hola, Luigi. ¿Cómo estás? Thank you, Mosa, for giving us up to Ner <coughs> Ner <coughs> I have something in my throat. Neratrek, welcome. Thank you, Mosa. I appreciate it a lot. Do you not have any friends there that like to hang out or have fun? Um, I mean, I have friends. Yeah, I have friends. But like, I do go out. Like I go out with my friends like once a week or something. <clears throat> I have two like really close two like really close friends, and I have like ten people in the city that I know that I hang out with sometimes. But like, listen, after talking to people all day on the internet, sometimes I just don't want to like talk to more people. You know. Sometimes I just like need some alone time, some me time, some alinity time. <clears throat> Can you pronounce Fernando? I say it weird. Fernando, oh, yeah. Jose, Juan. Yeah, people have. Your heart. accent sounds funny, but it also <clears throat> sounds really nice. That I will take that tonoy. I appreciate it. 
Thanks. Okay, I need to like clear my throat. <coughs> I don't know what the deal is with my throat. I think I'm getting sick or I have like phlegm or some shit. It's snowing so much in Saskatoon also. Yeah, like, I oh, I also live in Saskatoon, so that's why I don't go out. <clears throat> you know? I... Have you guys ever been to Saskatoon? Okay, so it's flat. It's cold. It's windy. And there's nothing out there. It's just like farmland. So there's not a hell of a lot to do in Saskatoon. So I could be also like... I guess a reason why I don't go out much. <laughs> I used to live there. Yeah. There's just not like, and I like staying indoors. And I think like, <clears throat> I actually like the fact that there's nothing to do because then I don't have to feel guilty about not wanting to go out. Because when I lived in Colombia, when I lived in Colombia, I lived in a beautiful place and my friends wanted to go out and I just wanted to stay home playing video games. And not only I never told my real life friends that I played video games Because I was embarrassed of the fact that I played World of Warcraft all day I would feel guilty about it I had to feel bad about the fact that I didn't want to go out The fact that I want to stay home and play video games And so now that I live in Canada First of all, I don't got people hassling me to go out Because really nobody wants to go out And it's great. It's just lovely and it's warm indoors and it's cold out there and it's just like the best feeling in the world. You know how people get depressed in the winter? I get depressed in the summer. I love the winter. I love the idea that out there it is so cold and I am in here so nice and warm and safe inside my basement and nothing could ever get me. Like... Nothing could harm me here. We don't have earthquakes here. We don't have hurricanes. Oh, yeah. We get tornadoes, Costco but I've never is the only seen time one. I need to go out. That's like a club night for me. Free samples oh, yeah. Free and samples at Costco. Doesn't get much better. You do, you do learn to enjoy the little things when you live in Saskatchewan. You learn to love the exhibition every year, even though it's shed. It's just like a town fair, but it's like... Hmm, the best thing that happens here in the year. <laughs> Who doesn't like the eggs? I love the eggs. <clears throat> or like the taste of Saskatchewan by the river every summer. You know, the very short summer that we have is really nice. I got cross-country skis. I'm going to try today. Oh, people do that here. It looks very silly, but it looks fun. Yeah, people do cross-country skiing. They like walk. Is that the one where they walk with the... With the big things. Oh, and people have like um, snowmobiles and stuff. Like, it's fun, I guess. You can do cool stuff out there. But what did Ken Bra say? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're the one that said that. I thought somebody else said that. Okay, take some videos. I want to see you con cross country skiing. Well, who doesn't love going to Taste of Saskatchewan and eating choke cherries? from a random bush and so overpriced dude we should do something next year now that there's so many subs from the city like we could do something with phil and um just the ones that are here kembra you know and we could do something with maria there's a few more people in the city that watch my stream no i don't have a snowboard um, I'm not very like sporty type. I'm a very like clumsy person. So I I I would probably fall and like injure myself <laughs> Are Canadian people actually really nice? Yes, Tonio Canadian people are so nice. It sucks Okay, it's really unreal um It's a good thing. No, no, no. It's a really good thing. It's a really good thing and it's awesome until you're in a line and somebody comes in and cuts in front of the line and everybody's looking at each other like, oh my god, we want to tell this person, but we don't want to bug him. Like, people here are so nice that they won't, like, talk to anyone because they don't want to, like, be rude by talking to people. They don't want to be rude by, like, brushing against someone else. 
it's really funny because in canada like if you're in a bus or something you always have to leave a space in between people because like sitting next to someone how dare you inconvenience that person by sitting next to them so when it ends up happening especially like where i live because i live in a very small town uh well small city but people like just don't talk to you so you don't get to make any friends you don't get to like talk to people you know in colombia i'm used to like getting in an elevator and having a conversation knowing everybody that lives in my neighborhood and like that doesn't really happen here so you do lose a lot of warmth like canadians come off of us cold because they're so nice that they feel like that they're rude by intruding into oh, your you life know. i don't know if that love makes sense yo like a boss thank you so much for the three dollars and i do love canada and i love how nice and, and respectful canadians are but sometimes i wish Sometimes I wish that they would be just a little bit more in my way, you know, just a little bit closer to me and just a little bit warmer and, you know, they respect other people's space too much. Dude, if they touch you, like if they brush against you some like a little bit, they go like, oh, I'm so sorry. And you're just like, dude, I didn't even feel you touching me, you know? So, like, sometimes I, I want somebody to brush against me. I want somebody to touch my shoulder, you know? But that doesn't happen here. And I'm, like, I'm from Colombia, so I'm used to people coming. Like, people that don't even know me, like, coming and being like, Hey, how's it going? And, like, touching my leg and stuff. And, okay, that bugs me now. That bugs me. But, like, I'm used to... Colombians are very touchy. And, like, I need that, that like, touch sometimes, you know? So... Today is my first winter day. Yay. Oh, nice. This is, dude, it's been snowing here for a long time. <laughs> All November, there's been snow in the ground here. Yeah. They, like, apologize for existing. Yeah, Canadians apologize for existing. To the point that when, like, something actually rude happens, there's no, like, way of saying sorry. Because you just feel like a sorry is not enough. Because a sorry is what you say when you're too close to somebody else. So then when you, like accidentally bump into someone and throw them on the floor like what do you say there you know like i don't know they aren't so nice in ottawa okay maybe this is a saskatchewan thing it could be a saskatchewan thing i don't want to generalize all of canada it could totally just be a saskatchewan thing you give them their your wallet dude this is so crazy there was when i was in university i was like in my second year or third year of university and i was taking this class and like it was pretty pretty weird building like not a lot of people go but in one of the bathrooms there's a wallet in there okay and i want to admit that i went through the wallet i just wanted to see if there was an id in there and there was money there's 50 bucks in this wallet okay and i just left it there and every day i use the same bathroom because i i i tend to like like a certain toilet oh, yeah. i generally go with the sides yeah, sometimes it's a some... cold weather long winter thing because half the settlers died in the first winter when they first came to the midwest people oh. have to cooperate i guess that makes sense thank you chronic so i tend to go to the sides the stalls and the and the ends because i read somewhere that those are the ones that people use the least and so you know, I would go to the very, very end stall, go in there every day. And those 50 bucks were still in there. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going to take this wallet and take it somewhere. Eventually, like a month later, I got so tired of seeing it that I took her, I took the, I took the wallet in. And I did not pocket the 50 bucks were still in that wallet. Can you guys believe that? Like in a school where like students, students are super broke. Nobody would take the 50 bucks. So unreal. Alenita, yo soy español y te llevo tiempo viendo. Te acabo de enterarme que eres colombiana. Me alegra mucho. Hola, Rubén. ¿Me puedes hablar en español en el chat si quieres? O en inglés. O sea, me queda más fácil si hablas en inglés, pero también puedes hablar en español. Cualquier idioma que prefieras. Seriously, I would have taken the money. I know, but the problem is like... And I don't know how this works. I don't know how, like, the psychology of this whole thing is. But when I am in Colombia, because I'm in a society in which everybody's trying to take advantage of others, and, like... Okay, I don't want to say that everybody's trying to take advantage of, of others, but, like... You grow getting used to that if you don't take something, it's gonna get taken away from you, okay? 
So it's a, it's a culture of like, you gotta take something for it to be yours. In Canada, it's a society of like, nobody takes anything. And everything is like, respected and valued as like, your own. So it's a different mentality. And when I'm in Colombia, I become Colombian. And when I'm in Canada, I become Canadian. Like, it's different. Whatever you go, like, you get... I don't know, you get influenced by the culture of where you're at. Which is a really good thing, to be honest. So you steal in Colombia. No, I don't steal, but for example, like... This is, this is gonna sound silly, but like, Hi, the Buckingham. people that do... The way people do lines. Like, the people, the way the people get in lines. Nordum, thank you so much for the 59 months. And this is like... Everything goes like this in Colombia, but this is a good example. Like, you go in Colombia somewhere where you have to do a line. And everybody is like, pushing each other and like, oh my god, who's getting in? Like, here I am, you know? And in Canada, everybody's like, super far away from each other. Like, nobody's looking at the front. Everybody respects their turn. It's so different. So in Colombia, you kind of like, have to shove your way into things in order to be able to get there otherwise like people are gonna shout their way in and you're never gonna be able to get in the line um and so when i'm in colombia i i act like a colombian in that way when i'm in canada yeah like the way people do with lines how do you say that the people the way that people get in a line the way that people get in a line <laughs> canadians don't do lines okay the way that people Stand in lines. Thank you, guys. The way the people stand in lines. Then Colombia versus in Canada. All right. We got it. Don't cut the line. It's not even about cutting the line. It's like Colombians, like, do. Colombians get in the line. <laughs> See, in Spanish, it's hacer fila. So in, in Spanish, it, technically, you're doing a line. Which in English doesn't make sense. So that's why sometimes I say things in a way that sound like I'm saying something else, but it's just because I'm trying to translate it. Um, anyway. The way that people hace la puta fila, okay? The way that people hace la puta fila in Colombia is different than in Canada. All right? Let's go. So... El pasito perrón. Algo que está perrón. Mm -mm. Never been to Greece, you guys. Never been to Greece. I've been to Croatia. Thank you, Jason. Natty Algo que cheers, está perrón. Natty cheers, natty Toda la gente cheers. grita de emoción. La puta fila. <laughs> en serio que sí. <laughs> Que está perro, que toda la gente grita de emoción. Since you want to live there, have you ever wished to leave and go somewhere else? Like Toronto or Vancouver? Um, not really. I don't like big cities. But if I were to move somewhere, I would probably move to like Squamish. Like, if I could live anywhere I wanted, I would live, like, in Squamish. Squamish is, like, 20, 30 minutes away from Vancouver. Mm. And it's, like, up in the mountain. It's up north. And it's kind of, like, retired from, from, like, the city. I don't like big cities. Um, but I like being close to a big city because I like to be able to, like, go and party and, like, trash the city but not live there. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I, I don't like traffic and, like, I don't know. I like it quiet and calm. So, yeah, I have an uncle that lives in New York, and I really don't like New York. I don't understand how people can live in, in that place. Um, I, I prefer, I prefer, because people trash the city, okay? Cities are, like, big cities are super dirty, you guys. Like, it's gross. It's really gross. So, I love... And, like, not just, like, physical trash, but, like, sound trash. Like, people are so loud and noisy in a city. <clears throat> not all cities. Okay, maybe... Maybe not all. New York is pretty dirty, though. Except for, like, Central Park. But it's just kind of, like... 
it's just like sound and people everywhere and it's just like it stresses me out it really stresses me out okay boomer no i don't think that makes me a boomer it just makes me a person that needs it to be calm you know i think it's a it's a fact of my personality not my age yeah and like i like having distance from my neighbors i like being able to like scream at three in the morning without worrying about somebody else hearing me so oh thank you very sweet okay boomer. thank you for the 13 months <laughs> Just get good earplugs. No, dude, when you get earplugs, okay, I love earplugs, but like you can hear your breathing and your heartbeat and it's really loud. Like earplugs actually make you aware of like all your physiological sounds. It's super strange. I I I don't know, I find it really strange. New York City is cleaner than Colombia. Well, of course, duh but it's still kind of like the buildings are dirty and i don't know just use headphones the best thing ever i think headphones was with like some um how do you call it with some white noise would be nice that would probably be easier to fall asleep than earplugs but i like to sleep on my side so how is that gonna work <clears throat> thank you dev fuck new YC, york city cool oh <laughs> thank you Hey, no, a lot of people like it. You know, a lot of people like New York. That's why it's so popular, right? Because people like living there. Also, like, people spend so much money living there. Like, it's expensive to live in big cities, you guys. I hate when I'm aware of my own breathing and I have to breathe manually. But it's a good thing for you, actually. Because, like, you can just meditate and, like, focus on your breathing and only on your breathing. My family's from New York City. I have family in New York City, too. I'm not, like, being a hater just to hate. I just don't like it there, you guys. My hair has, like, a really weird texture. I never realized the texture. It's got, like, little balls in it. Okay. You're dying to move out, yeah? Where would you like to move, Dev? Where would like be the perfect place for you to live? I feel like every place is good and bad things, you know? Like here in Saskatchewan, we get shitty weather, but it's really calm and peaceful. So it really depends. A tropical island with no insects. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> exactly. Like every every place is pros and cons. We get you get big bugs. Like Colombia has really good weather, but <clears throat> it's got a lot of like bugs. It's really giant cockroaches. Like, have you guys ever seen giant cockroaches? I'm talking like this big. <clears throat> yeah, it is disgusting. So gross. I hate cockroaches. I can do honestly. I can do snakes. <clears throat> I have no problem with snakes. I can do snakes, I can do anything else, like even a Scorpio, I think. A scorpion? I just don't like cockroaches. Like I can do spiders, I'm fine with spiders. I'm fine with anything, but fucking cockroaches are the worst. I just have like phobia of cockroaches. Yeah. What are those mutants? I don't know why they get so big in South America. I think it's because there's more bugs to eat or something like that. That they get really big. Seriously. Don't all ladies are afraid of roaches. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think women are... Why, why is it this idea women are scared of insects? I'm not scared of insects. I just don't like cockroaches. I don't think it's a fear, actually. I think it's a phobia. It's just like, I see a cockroach and it makes me feel like repugnant like um i don't know i can't describe it it just makes me feel like i'm crawling over my skin oh it's oxygen makes them bigger really because there's more oxygen i think there has to be more food to, to for them to get bigger hold on I need a tissue. hey why is 
I think they need to go unkilled to get bigger. Oh, there has to be no predator. Well, do you guys remember like their like animals were really big in an area? I think it was like lizards that were really big. Why do animals? How do I say this though? Like a population of animals, lizards. Why were lizards? So big. I can't spell right now. Oh, oxygen levels are lower. Oh my god, you're right. Cooler, drier climate makes plants grow slowly. Oh, throughout most of the world, plants can't grow quickly enough to support giant animals. There's no evolutionary advantage in being gigantic now. Only detriments. There are still some big reptiles compared to other animals, mostly among the archosaurs. Abundance of food and presence of competition. I think we're all we will are all correct. So it's a it's a mix of things: oxygen, food, and predators. Cool. Like, I think if there was, like, a really big evolutionary advantage to being big, then we would probably be really large. You know? Like, humans would be really big. But I, I don't think that women, like, humans evolved to, like... Like, if you think so, there, there isn't even an evolutionary advantage to, like, reproducing yourself right now. You know what I mean? Like... If you think about who has a lot of kids, I don't know if this is true, but I think I could be wrong. So don't don't like count me on this one. But I get the idea. People who are like low socioeconomical, like what is it? Whatever. They have lower classes, have more kids. Yeah. Like most people that are wealthy only have like two kids or one kid, or they don't even have kids. Is because of lack of education. Well, there's a few factors. Like, for example, my family in Colombia is a big family. And it's because they're really religious. And there's some religions in which, like, you can only procreate to give birth. You can't procreate for pleasure. And so people just lie to themselves. And they make themselves believe that, you know, like... They make themselves believe that they want 15 kids, but nobody fucking wants 15 kids. Like, for real? Like, you're gonna tell me that my grandma believes that she wanted 15 kids? No. They were just doing it all the time and they were getting pregnant. They were being like, oh yeah, we are doing this because we want more children. Because the Lord wants us to have more children. But I think they just wanted to bang. And then when you recognize that what you do is you want us to bang, you know, and then you just protect yourself. And then you don't have 15 kids. Then life is a lot easier when you don't have 15 kids. Believe me. I come from like really big family. Yeah. Like my dad, they're 15. My mom, they're 10. I have like 40 uncles. Sorry, sorry. Uh, cousins. I only have like... 9 and 14 is 23. I have 23 aunts and uncles and I have 40 cousins. 40 cousins, you guys. I don't even know my cousins. I know like 20 of my 40 cousins. So yeah. It's like your own village. I know, we could have had our own village. It's crazy. Here in Brazil, we call the giant cockroach something like coconut three cockroaches. Oh gosh, okay. I don't want to think about it anymore. I, I get like really uncomfortable thinking about them, honestly. <laughs> Especially now that I have a hair like crawling in my face. I feel like start thinking that they're crawling on me. World with a better place without, without kids. The world would be, I think like 
everybody should have one kid or two. Like if you think about it, if two people have two kids and then those two kids, each one has one. Like if each person has one child per person in the world, right? And like you get together with someone else, so it's two. Um, but if, if for each person there's another kid, then the population would stabilize itself. But there's so many people that are having so many kids that the population is just like growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. That's not good. I have one sister and a brother, and my youngest mother said three kids is a perfect number. Three kids, you think is? I think two is a perfect number. Yeah, I think two kids is perfect. They keep each other company, you know. But I don't have any kids, so I don't know. <laughs> I want two boys and a girl. A boy and a girl would be perfect. But if then you have two boys and or two girls, then yeah. Well, we go from a lifespan of 30 years old to 100 year olds. I know, like, people are living so much more. It's great. We can do so much more with our lives. Before, like, by the time you were 30, you were, like, ancient. And now, it's not so bad anymore. <clears throat> you know, people live to, like, they're, like, 90. Look at the freaking... The queen of, of uh, Britain. You know? That lady is so old. Like, holy balls. It's crazy. Yeah. she's And she's still killing it. Elizabeth, yeah. She still, like, talks and gives speeches and stuff. My grandma, when she was that age, she was unfortunately not that well. But, you know, she's a beast. Yeah, she is a beast. She's 93. 20 years ago, people had their first kid of age of 22. Now it's 30. That is... That is cool, I think. I don't know. Actually, it's probably not that good. I think there's some, like, genetic reasons why you should have kids earlier. But, like, whatever. We have the technology to identify a lot of, um... A lot of diseases right now. Um, genetic diseases from, like... What is it called? I should know about this stuff. Um, the amniotic fluid, they can like detect a bunch of stuff at a, like a really early time. So people can terminate if they want to. Which I mean, it's a whole moral dilemma and that's for another topic. But yeah, like really, really early on, you can determine a lot of um, genetic things about your baby. Yeah, and that happens with, like after after like a woman is like thirty five, I think. Isn't that kind of crazy that guys can have kids like at any time? Like y'all's sperm stays good forever. You can be parent, you can 